Morning. I'm just back from dropping the squirtling off at school. It's a beautiful 20 degrees out today. Uh, I'm not working at work today, so today is about the freelance work, um, getting a few odd things done, maybe doing a clean up. I just did some dishes, got some laundry on, because, you know, today I'm, uh, I'm a homebody. When I was a young kid, I mean like, tricycle young, I, I don't mean like, you know, when I was 16, I mean when I was at uh, formative years, kind of young, um, I lived a block away from a little girl who had a very nice trike. And um, this little girl, I think her name was Isabel, uh, we were living in um, Franco, Manitoba at the time. That's where I spent my formative years, in a small French city next to Winnipeg, or across the river from Winnipeg or something, called St. Boniface. I think it's actually part of Winnipeg now, but this is not an interesting factoid, so forget it, move on. Um, anyway, so one day, one day this little girl and I were playing a service station, and I always got to be the service person whenever we played these little games. She was always like, you know, the rich person who drove up, and I was always the, uh, the guy who filled up the tank or whatever. Anyway, so this one time, this was a, a metal trike, the kind you had in, in the 70s. Um, There's no plastic crap uh, on most of my toys, that's for sure. Anyway, so she drives up in her little trike. Let's see. I know madame. She was a dig. And she says, fill her up. And I said, okay, where's your tank? And she said, right in the back. And on those old trikes, you know, they had the metal platform to stand on and a hole in the middle. Not in the middle, but sort of in the center of the very back. So I said, just here. Stuck my hand in that, in that little hole and couldn't get it out. I pulled and pulled. And Isabel got more and more concerned in the way little kids do. She ran and got her dad. He couldn't get me out of the damn trike either. So he picked up the trike. And here's the thing, my, my mama and dad were sitting out front of our house having a, a beer and some cheese. <laughs> and they see Around the corner comes Isabel's dad, Isabel. And there's me. I can't figure out how the hell to get me out of the track either, so they call the fire department. Because, you know, fire departments are good at these things, I guess. So, we're all hanging out because Isabel doesn't want to lose her trike, obviously. <laughs> her dad wants to know what's going to happen to me. And we start to hear off in the distance a siren. And it's getting louder. And louder. It starts to get loud enough that my parents sort of look at each other and go, oh, that's not for us, is it? Well, sure enough, um, one of those fire rescue trucks comes whipping around the corner, lights ablaze, siren on. The whole damn neighborhood's like, oh my god, 1970s Winnipeg, something's going on. So they all come pouring out of their hoses. I've mentioned before that I was a shy child, right? So, you imagine this, you got these firemen standing there, 
all the neighbors standing around on our front yard looking down. There's Jesse. Finger stuck in a track. And I'm thinking two things. First, I don't want to lose my finger. I was a kid, right? Um, so, you know, these things are always, I guess, in the realm of possibility and in a child's um, imagination. Second thing, I'm really f freaking embarrassed. I'm so furious at all my neighbors for, sh you know, showing up to this very exciting event. I'm, like, shaking my fist. And the way the fireman got my finger out of that trike was one of them reached into his truck and brought out a ginormous vat of like petroleum jelly and asked my mom to run in and get a bunch of ice cubes and they worked it out just you know carefully slowly methodically worked my finger out of the track which in hindsight my damn parents could have done <laughs>